taking you there. That their world would live 6,000 years, and at the end of that 6,000 years, God will come and destroy the world. Right? The world that they are referring to is their own world. And then the God will set up a world of righteous, justice, right? And the world of peace and security under the guidance of God. Right? That world is now gradually emerging in on the white man's world. The whole of the white race the entire world, Europe and America, today are preparing for a total destruction of the present civilization. That you know. They are not making rockets for nothing. They are not trying to send one to the moon for nothing. They are not creating uh, 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 and making submarines to crawl on the bottom of the ocean for nothing. Carrying deadly uh, uh, trains of uh, uh, <coughs> gas or uh, high explosions to kill civilization. They are not skimming the, uh, uh, <coughs> the clouds and the <coughs> ostentation of the ether of seeking to get out of world travel. Find a place or uh, <coughs> conquer the things which have no gravity in it. They're not trying to do that for nothing. They are trying to find a way to plant civilization in some other part of the universe that it may survive there. Because they know what is going to happen here. Right? I mean, a uh, uh, man uh, uh, from God having the uh, truth from his mouth and the uh, uh, warning of a total destruction of the present world and would not come and tell you these fights I would be worse than the murder of you. Yeah. I am here telling you today to join up with Allah and with Islam, accept Islam, and go back to your own people and live and get out from un or rather off the cross and join on under the cross. This cross, this sign of Christianity is death. That's the sign of that religion. And they also paint uh, uh, it in their churches. On yonder still stands an old rugged cross. The very imminent of suffering and shame. Someday I hope to exchange that old cross. For what? For a request. If the Christians, if the Christians want to change their own emblem of their religion and change the very uh, emblem of suffering and shame, why do you want to claim to that rugged cross? Huh? You have the right. You are free to live in the hereafter. But here is going to cause you to lose your life. Fear of the white man. Fear that he won't like what you believe in. I say, my friend, I was born in Georgia. I am a Muslim. I am a messenger of God. You have no more right to hear the truth than I, Elijah Muhammad. You are afraid of being killed. You are afraid of being beaten to death. You are afraid of losing your job. You are afraid of losing the friendship. Where well, there is none. You are afraid of losing a smile. Where well, there is none but a false. I say you are afraid of everything but the salvation of yourself. I say, my friend, pick it up and stay here and suffer. Pretty soon the message will be last with these uh, uh, right. on there, the of the quick, quick, yes. hail, yes, <laughs> and uh, also more dreadful and frightful violent storm as you already are having. Insects, it's going to plague you. Other uh, things will plague you. Disease. It's going to plague you. That can't be cured. 
Look at what's going on now. Look at the stars you are having. Look at the lives that they're taking. Look at the ice twist that you are having. I say, my friend, go strike your book and you will find uh, uh, the Bible, its own history, our uh, scriptures, justifying and bearing Elijah's witness that these things are coming upon this nation. Listen at their own preachers, preaching and warning you of God's judgment again. Amen. Think over these things. Here today, a man standing in your midst, and one that is born in your midst, receiving a message that you've never heard before in your life. Opening his mouth in your midst, speaking to you, telling you and warning you, and even the white man, bear me just a uh, morning, uh, pardon me, testifies to the truth that I am teaching you by opening the door and permitting me to teach you. Opening his own radio to allow me to teach you the truth so that he himself will not be charged by God. That yes, he did not uh, uh, shut out the truth from your head. He has opened the door. He has given you the chance to listen to the truth, to read the truth. You've never heard nothing like it before. It's all in your face. Here you say it's the day to Elijah. I don't want no religion that God uh, uh, has any uh, 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 exceptions of persons. I don't want no religion that he has accepted the person that uh, Elijah teaches. I don't want no religion, uh, no God that won't accept the white man. Three hundred years, he had a God in a church that didn't accept you. <laughs> and today, he don't want you in his church. Right here in his Today, they don't want you in that church. And you are fools for trying to get it. And your church is the house of God, whether he 
have established his name? Why don't you go over to the church and get on your knees and say, Hey, uh, uh, God, uh, hello, Jesus. Uh, you're the white folks who's seen the hell out of us. God and from the murderers of God. Right? 
I want you to know the truth. I will hang on the truth that I say. Adam is the father of the white woman. That's it. And not you and I. We have no beginning, no end. Let any scientist of any race try and locate our search and find and prove to me that he found the first record of the black man. And I'm through preaching. He can't find it. We have been here. We know the birth of the white man. We know the ending of them. But they don't know our birth and don't know nothing about an end. They're not preaching to you today the end of the black nation. They're preaching to you the end of their world. That's enough to make you wise. That's enough to make you go and look for another place. This is the world that is prophesied that will be destroyed by God. America is the only country that will be born. She will be set apart and she will be, uh, she will burn for 390 years and that it will take her then 710 years to cool off and start growing vegetation again. That's what Allah taught me 29 years ago. He says that he will set apart and then he taught me or rather taught, taught me how that he will set her apart. And that is by cutting a shortage uh, into gravity. And when you cut a shortage into gravity, gravity it brings about a flame, and all what you are breathing as air is turned into a flame. It becomes fire instead of air. And uh, that uh, is mentioned in the Bible, uh, where you read it in Revelation, where an angel said uh, by the Revelator to put one feet on the ground and one on uh, the feet on water. And he uh, lifted up his voice and declared that time uh, now uh, is no longer. Right? Uh, that uh, is the only way that you could cut a shorter into grass. You would have to be in such position as that to bring about a shorter into grass. But now, just what you will do, uh, don't say no more about that, how to bring it about, but this is the position that you must be in. Now, uh, what they call cracking atom, that's fire cracking stuff. Atom bulbs that they have is nothing. So, so what uh, is coming? All the atoms will be uh, exploded at once, just like that at the twinkling of your eye. And the whole country will be in three apart. Uh, up 12 miles into the grass, up to the sea. It will be in nothing but a flame, and she will be burning for uh, 390 years, and uh, in order to burn up all of the uh, <coughs> bark of this civilization, yeah. nothing will be carried out of, so that you don't try and build and structure after this civilization. As we don't have no mark or no uh, sign of the civilization of Sodom and Gomorrah or uh, the people of Noah, so it will be after this thing. You won't be able to carry any instrument of theirs away. Destroy the civilization totally and all the work as the Bible teaches you, so that you won't feel that to me. You have to build a new heaven and a new earth. As the Bible says, but it's not a new earth, but a new civilization. And you will have one altogether different from there. You won't have enough to do with it, because the civilization and the instrument that they will use altogether different from what you have here today. I could talk to you on this kind of subject from now until tomorrow evening at this time, but the time is now, uh, <coughs> has come that we have to try and get out to go to a plane back to Chicago. But I say to you, my beloved brothers and sisters that have been so patient and uh, listened to me here this afternoon, that uh, I hate to leave you. I have so much to tell you. I have uh, enough to teach you from now on until that you go to sleep and get uh, wake again. And I won't go to sleep. I will, you will find me still teaching and telling you something different every word of my mouth. God has filled me with much to tell you. I am not half God known to you what I intend to get on you. But I thought what I have said was sufficient for you to start walking with. Remember, uh, you are born Muslim. You don't, you don't join a bit in Islam. 
You meant that in the beginning, it's no nature. You are born a divine uh, member of God. A Muslim is one who uh, has submitted himself entirely to the will of God and is a divine member of that uh, nation. Now, you are that by nature. I say again to you, my friend, don't go out, brother and sister, uh, I'm not through with you. And uh, I say to you, my beloved friend, that uh, the truth has come to you. And the falsehood that you have been brought up in and is still being taught will soon vanish away from you. And that fear that you have will soon leave you. Fear not. If we are still in the truth, be happy to die in the truth and in the world. Be happy. But God has not come to uh, destroy life, destroy your life. It already has been destroyed. He came to save you. And if you believe in him, as the book says, he will save you from the destruction of this world and from the hands of your enemies. I thank you. And I'm happy to say that you have been more than intelligent here this afternoon to sit in this uncomfortable place, listen to me for the last uh, couple of hours. It is wonderful. You could not have sit in the church and listen to Reverend Preacher Jonah go to Nineveh for two hours to save your life. Should you have? No, because you used to it and you don't uh, see nothing in it in, anymore or here no more than you have always heard. And in 15 minutes you're ready to tell Preacher to say amen. Let's go home. You're not learning nothing. Because if he would tell you who this fish that swallowed Jonah really are, and who the really modern Jonah are, and the, the sea that he was put in, and the show that he was put on to go for himself on, he would wake you up. But he don't know. It was symbolic teaching. Never was a man went down in no fish fell and stayed there no three days, three nights. You can't do it today, and no fish out there today will live with you in them that long. No, sir. You will kill a fish if you stay in him three days and three nights and won't die. <laughs> no, sir. I tell my friends, wake up and learn the science of the book. This is the uh, big whale that has swallowed you. It's a mess. <laughs> you are the... <laughs> And the three days means uh, the 300 years that you have been in service with slavery. I tell my beloved brothers, it's as much that I can tell you. There was nothing like no blood all over this earth. I will say that. Blood was only in the uh, territory where I know all that. You cannot baptize this earth in water so that it will cover all the mountains. And when we have one that's near six miles past in India, you cannot do that and cover all of this ball. Look, just look at that there. It's round like that ball. Now to put a uh, cover of water all around that ball so that it'll be six inches above it, then uh, you're going to cause some damage to this ball, right? You're going to cause, uh, uh, if you put that much added weight to it, six miles of water in the, uh, in the belt, all the way over the earth. You will cause it to lose its hold in the magnetic, or at the magnetic needle point uh, of the earth, which is north and south. There, these two points, which our earth help in its uh, orbit around the sun. There, the magnetic is so strong at these two points that it can keep our earth attracted so that the sun will, and moon will bounce around its orbit, uh, around the orbit of the sun, that is man. That uh, uh, power is not strong enough there to add that much weight to our earth, lest you will have the earth then lose its hold at the magnetic needle point, and that will destroy the earth and you and our feet. It will start falling into space, because it will catch fire and you will burn up as you fall. There's a <coughs> live planet falling through dead space, will uh, the friction of her own atmosphere through the dead space will cause her to uh, come nothing but a ball of fire. Right. And if it strikes the atmosphere or any other planet, she said, don't fall. Yes. So these days, don't think so. That old foolish stuff that she used to believe in. Write me and ask me all the questions. I know you have a head full of them now. 
writes me at 4847 Woodlawn, uh, uh, he's a 5335 Greenwood, and uh, asks me any questions about what I have been teaching on, what I am uh, broadcasting anytime you want. Right now, he's Elijah Muhammad, 4847 South Woodlawn, Chicago. 5335 Greenwood Avenue. Either one of these uh, addresses, you can get in touch with me. And write me. Ask me anything about that Bible that you don't think you understand. I give it to you in black and white, and if you find my interpretation is not uh, true, I will give you $10,000 out of my brother's best pocket and pay with my life for love. That's just how I exactly. I thank you, my beloved brothers and sisters. Now, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, remember this. You must get out of the white man's name if you want to be independent. If you want to be free, you must get out of his name. As long as you are called by his name, you belong to him. Some, uh, some smart uh, elephant will tell you a name don't mean anything. Tell him, say, Mr. Fool, if uh, name didn't mean anything, why did one slave master change our father's name when he bought our mother and father? Why didn't he leave him in that name? Because he would have left that property belonging to the other master. Then again, if name don't mean anything, why does the Bible say that God will give to his people a name after his own? When uh, the judge, judgment comes, why, why does the book teach you again that a good name is white gold or more valuable than fine gold? If a name don't mean anything. Why do people ask you uh, as soon as you approach them to get acquainted with you, the first thing they ask you is your name, right? And if your name sounds as something worth what, they then uh, will respect you according to that name, right? All praise is so. But you don't have no name. You are nameless. You are without a name. Because that name that you are in don't belong to you. That's the white man. Get out of that name. Get out of his church and stop the argument. Stop this confusion between them by going to your office. You have a nation to go to. You have a country to go to. You have your own to God to worship. You have a great religion of freedom, justice, and equality to worship. And to believe it, why would you hang around here and let the white man beat your head day and night? Because you try to stick it in his church, stick it in his uh, uh, restaurant, stick it in his uh, transportation that he's forbidden to ride on. Why don't you act like a man? Tip your hat to him. You don't want me in here, mister? No, get out. Thank you, sir. Go on out. That makes, that makes it. But you... Oh, I, I, I'm just uh, uh, as good as you. That, that, that's it, sir. Go fill your restaurant. That's right. You want a church to uh, have your meeting in? Go fill the one and cook it. And uh, you can go out like you want. Don't go over there trying to push yourself in his church just to sit there beside him. I think you have sit beside him long enough. <laughs> 400 years and you have talked hell ever since you've been here, you, know, you, you shouldn't want to sit away from them. That's right. You have talked nothing but hell trying to uh, stay under the white man. Why don't you go to your own city? Why don't you seek them? Look what some of them are saying right here in this state. That they hate you so bad that they want even to deprive you, even of gas to go in your own uh, uh, car and even into your own practice to form you. Think over these things. They hate you so much so that they don't want you even to go to prayer with them. What kind of God is that? Uh, I don't want you, your God in your uh, prayer service if you don't want me in it. I don't want it. No, I won't come near you. I don't want your food if I got to sit there all day to get you to feed me. I don't know what I might eat if I sit there all day taking you just eat me. Take over these things. You make the food. That is no way to get independent uh, with other nations. The way to get independent with other nations is to go out and acquire the same education and instruments that they have. To start education and show yourself absolutely a man that loves us. If I tell you I don't want to 
want you to walk with me, then all right, you should say, thank you, I don't, uh, I will not walk with you if you don't want me to walk with you. It makes sense. But no way of trying to get yourself to recognize by the white man is really foolish. It's foolish. It, it is not right for you to sit down in my house all day long to make me feed you. If I get a gun and shoot you out of my house, I'm in my right. Right? I'm just only talking sick. But you know, this is all the way they will serve us. Go make you a place to serve yourself. Why do you want to eat with them? You don't want to eat with them. Why? Why do you want to eat with them? Well, so that I be recognized as being uh, like them. You are fool. You don't want to be like them. Make a civilization for yourself. My friend, you have acted the silly. This is the silly. Oh, he's on the side of these old people that want to keep us safe. Separate. You must be separated. God said you must be separated. How can God destroy the world if you're going to remain in it? Huh? He wants to chastise the people for treating you as they have for the last 400 years. And now you want to jump up in their lap, hug them and kiss them and say, you know we're brothers, so God can kill you. Your Bible teaches you. Why would you die, old my people? Come out of her. Be not protect her uh, with her in her fight. Huh? Come out of her, my people. Why will you die? My friend, you are the people that the book is referring to. Yeah, you say, oh, if, 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 uh, uh, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Christian, he should recognize me in this church. He didn't recognize you for all of these, uh, pictures in the past, did he? And he's still here? Who was not, uh, any better off than, uh, uh, those days than you are today, in a way of speaking? You are more a slave today to the white man than you are under service Why? Because you're mentally slave now. He has gotten you here. Education makes you a problem in his midst today because you acquired some of his education. And that makes you want to be everything that he is. Really, right? You want him to have the education to recognize you as uh, with the same degree and I walk with you and talk with you and sit with you and ride with you. It makes you more of a slave. My friend, then, if you had never seen his education, I'm not telling you that to go, but if you would take that education, pull it among yourself, unite your people, and tell your people, come, let us put our nickels and dimes together and buy us what white man has. Buy us a factory. Go put our steering labels in there. Put them to work. Put our money together and go buy us farmland and make bread and put cattle on that farm and bring our meat into our chicken for ourselves that we live. Bring our own bread that we grow ourselves. Put it in our kitchen. Feed our people ourselves and stay away from the bread line. Make our own money work for ourselves and he's making it work for himself. Do these things like other people do. Stop taking your money going out there. Getting a bottle of that tire. <laughs> Bottle of alcohol, all your brain is already done. You pour it in your stomach to make your work dumb part. Then you are free in his hand one in the morning. You are broke, you have none. You drink and drink it up today in liquor, right? And cut the food, right? You take it in, eat it up but, uh, in that which you shouldn't. You take it in, gamble it away when you should not do it. You take it and go buy soap when you should not do it. Judging yourself, you are already judged by this Right? Why should you do these things? Why don't you learn from your life? Take your money, pull it together and say, come on, brother, educator, and let's take our people up out of the mud, hide them over here in the factory, make them to make their own garment, make them to topple their own shoes, Make them to uh, go their own food. Make them to buy the clay land. And we make bricks for ourselves to build with. Let us go buy chicken and get a saw mill to saw our own lumber and a painting mill to paint it and build for ourselves. Then you will be acting like civilized people. Then the white man will respect you. But he himself got to put you down. Did you hear? As soon as he's out of Asia, 
An African? Yes. He's gonna put you down in and and he won't be able to carry you. Did you hear what I say? I'm warning you of this. Don't think that you go to the Danish world. If he's casted out of Asia and Africa, he's going to treat you double worse than what he's doing today. I said, come to Allah. You will soon see. You will soon come to know. Come to Allah. Accept this religion is love. Come and get the holy name of God. There's 100 names of God. Allah has that 100. Come and get one of these names. Get a name like mine. Muhammad. What? Does, what is the future of Muhammad? That name will live forever. There's no end to Muhammad. Why? Because it's an attribute of the suit of God. It uh, means praise and praise much and one worthy of praise. But God is the one that is worthy of praise. So when you say Muhammad, that's what it means. You are so foolish that you will laugh at, at their good name. 